All my life, I have been what some people called a straight arrow. I believe that a man should tell the truth, keep his word, and live with honor, that includes forgiveness when necessary. But this night, I threw all of that out the window. I would lie, break my word, and the only honor I would have is the self-respect that comes with revenge. To hell with forgiveness. I was sitting in my car outside the Nickel Inn, a bar in town. Don't ask me how it got that name, it's been around since my dad was walking around in short pants, and beer was probably a nickel. I knew Jeff would be inside, he always came here for a drink on his way home from work. I'd known Jeff since we were in elementary school, he'd been my best friend for as long as I could remember. He stood up for me when I married Barb, and I stood up for him when he married Claire. There wasn't a time when he wasn't a part of my life. We were like brothers and practically lived in each other's house growing up. In many ways, that didn't change when we got married, and it wasn't unusual for them to drop by our house or us into theirs unannounced. Betrayal changes a person. Not five hours later, I ran home on my lunch break to pick up some papers I had left there. It didn't seem like anything terrible had happened. I walked in the front door and was on my way to my office when I heard them. The husband's first thought was my wife is in trouble. You can imagine the struggle. Then I heard his voice, and I understood. In between grunts, there was laughter. I went to the open bedroom door, looked in, and all doubt fell away. They hadn't seen me. I'm not the type to linger and watch my wife and best friend betray me, so I just turned around and walked out the front door, the same way I came in. My life, as I knew it, was over. I never received the files and didn't remember them until hours later, back at work. I was useless. I just sat and reviewed what I had seen, pondering, asking questions no husband should ask, why? For how long? Were there others? Are my children even mine? I wondered how I would get home and what would I do once I was there. Maybe I should just get in my car, start driving, and not stop until I'm a thousand miles from home. Then I moved on to darker thoughts. I'll divorce her and kill him. I'll leave her with nothing. Then in time, I thought about my children. I could live without my wife, but I couldn't deprive them of their mother. I decided I had little choice, I would confront them both in my own way and in my own time. But first, I would weave my web of lies as they weaved theirs. On the way to the Nickel Inn, I wondered how could two people I've known for so many years betray me like this. What is wrong with me? Have I changed? Have they changed? I thought about this for weeks and months more, struggling with a terrible sense of inadequacy. There are no answers to questions like this because the only people who have answers can't be trusted to tell the truth. I felt truly lost and alone. Tonight, the truth would be the first thing that would have to be sacrificed. I had no trouble putting on a mask of anger and disappointment as I walked into the Nickel Inn. Jeff saw me right after I walked in and called out, John, over here buddy. Son of a bitch, I thought to myself. I nodded, exhaled, and lowered my eyes to the floor so he wouldn't see that the rage in me was directed at him. Walking over, I sat down in the chair behind his desk. Ralph was with him, Ralph is his buddy from work. It turned out better than I had imagined. Perfect timing, John, I was going to order a glass but now we can order a pitcher. Just the glass for me. I can't afford to be stopped tonight, dude, you look like your dog just died. What's wrong with you? I don't have a dog, Jeff. You know I don't. Now that the kids have gone to school, it's just me and my wife. And then it hit me. Empty nest syndrome, is that it? Is that what made her betray me? So what's bothering you? Jeff looked like he was equally worried about me and probably himself. That's the thing about cheaters, they always know they might get caught, and they're always worried about leaving a trail. She killed me, Jeff. She bloody killed me. I'm a dead man and all I have to do is fall. What the hell are you talking about? Who killed you? You're not dead, you're sitting right here. Come on, John, whatever it was, it can't be that bad. I looked him in the eye and said, she gave me AIDS, Jeff. Barb gave me AIDS. 
They say a person's face turns pale when they are in shock and green when they are seasick. We were miles from the sea, but the color I saw that day was green. My former best friend turned an unearthly green color, jumped up from the table, and ran to the men's room. He didn't make it. Whatever was in his stomach that night splattered all over the bar floor. Patrons in front and behind, to his left and right, all screamed in disgust and jumped out of their seats to escape the mess and the stench. And he, strangely enough, was alone. A sick drunk wasn't the most popular person in the bar, and to the other customers, he was just that. When the excitement subsided, I turned to the table and stared at Ralph. He looked like a man who felt like running. My wife is cheating on me. Hell of a way to find out, don't you think? Ralph only nodded. The only word to describe the look in his eyes was fear. I wonder if he'll put all the pieces of the puzzle together later. Jeff finally cleaned himself up as best he could. Walking back to our table, he was not a popular man all the way. He was met with stares and comments. Upon reaching our table, he asked, looking down at me, are you sure? How do you know? I'm not feeling well, and the doctor ordered a blood test. The results came back today. Jeff only nodded, turned, and walked out of the bar. The message had been sent. Ralph found a plausible excuse to leave after a minute, and I wondered who he would tell about it first. In any case, I enjoyed a cold beer while contemplating my next steps. It didn't take me long to figure out what the other tables thought of me as I sat back and smirked quietly, enjoying my beer. I sent the message quietly enough that the neighboring tables wouldn't guess what hit Jeff so hard or why Ralph had left so abruptly. It didn't really matter. With an empty glass and a surprisingly steady pulse for a dead man, I paid the bill and walked to my car. As I walked, I grinned and thought, what assholes. They slipped me a check, no matter. It was a small price to pay for the satisfaction I felt. By the time I got home, it was about seven. Dinner was burned, and smoke was coming out of the oven. I turned it off and opened the window, thinking I knew where Barb might be. I put on my best death look and went into the bedroom. I found her lying face down on the bed, sobbing and shaking. Message sent, message received, in the calmest voice I was capable of, I said, are you having a bad day? She screamed, and her screams got louder. I'm having a bad day too. I know what happened to me. What happened to you? Sometimes, I can be a real jerk. Between the screams, I heard a muffled, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't know you know. For a moment, I actually felt sorry for doing that. Then I remembered what I had seen earlier that day, and my regret didn't last long. I started moving my clothes into the guest room, and she noticed my efforts on the second step. What are you doing? I'm moving into the guest room. Please don't. I need you here. I just stared at her and continued to move my clothes. Later that night, there were muffled phone calls. I didn't try to listen, but one thing was heard clearly as Barb shouted into the receiver, you were the one, asshole. I got it from you. Three guesses who she was talking to. Oddly enough, the realization that Jeff was the one comforted me and brought a smile to my face. Whatever had caused her to cheat on me seemed to be a recent and limited phenomenon. My anger did not immediately return, and shortly thereafter, my grounded wife sat down across from me and asked, Can we talk? You talk, I'll listen. She clasped her hands together and looked at the floor. I've done a terrible thing. I know that. I don't know if you'll ever be able to forgive me, but I want you to know a few things. First of all, I'm more sorry than anyone else. I don't know what came over me. Bad wording, I thought. She continued, second, it was only twice and both times with the same man. I know that doesn't excuse anything, but I don't want you to think I'd done this kind of thing before. At that, she raised her head and looked me in the eye. Please, take a DNA test if you want, but don't ever think the children aren't yours. They are, I swear on all that is holy. I've been a good wife for 25 years. 
I never cheated on you, and then, in the last two months, I went rogue. Was it? I knew perfectly well who it was, but they say confession is good for the soul. Please don't make me tell you. Then I think we're done. No, please. I've caused you too much pain as it is. I need a name. After a long hesitation, she replied, okay, it was Jeff. My friend Jeff. Claire's husband, Jeff. I tried to keep the volume from turning into a dull roar. She just nodded. I decided to pretend I was digesting the new information. Why did you do that? That was about all I could say at that moment. She shook her head. I drank too much the first time. You weren't home, and Jeff came over. He just knocked and came in like he always does. We talked, he made jokes like he always does. We drank wine, and I guess I had too much to drink. It was once and for all. I couldn't get him out of the house fast enough. I was so embarrassed. I cried all night. And then she looked at me with a sadness and guilt the likes of which I had never seen before. Honestly, I don't know. Every time I saw Claire after that first time, I felt so guilty I couldn't live with myself. But then the kids moved apart. We both work, and I feel old. I know that's no excuse, and I can't give you a reason to forgive me. I just want you to know that this never happened before. It was only those two times and only with Jeff. I know you hate me, but please believe that I was faithful to you from our first date until two months ago. There wasn't much I could say. I listened and wondered, but I was inclined to believe her. 25 years of marriage teaches you when a spouse is lying, or at least that's what it seemed to me. Now I had my doubts. I have a lot to think about, with those words, I went to bed in the guest room. It wasn't much, but it was the biggest bone I intended to throw her. As you can imagine, the next few days in our house were quiet, or they were quiet but occasionally accompanied by my angry words. Maybe it seemed to me that Barb had gotten smaller. That was about as much as I had time to think about. I wanted to hurt the two of them as much as possible, but I was at a loss as to what to do next. Plus, I want to get back at Jeff, and so far, all I had was that he made a fool of himself at the bar. But I knew, they say there's no honor among thieves, but Jeff surprised me in two ways. First, he did cheat on Claire with several other women. Second, did he do the honorable thing and tell them that he may have infected them with HIV, or did Ralph put two and two together and spread the word? I guess I'll never know. Either way, I didn't expect it, neither did his wife. When a string of women showed up at her door wanting to do Jeff bodily harm, they weren't shy about telling his wife, and I would have thought Jeff would have told his wife sooner than his girlfriends, but Jeff was set up differently. He was probably building up his courage, or maybe he was testing himself first. Whatever the next week, Jeff moved into a hotel room and began looking to rent an inexpensive apartment. I had no sympathy for him. It was about this time that I had a small epiphany. I was going over the events of the past week, and it occurred to me, damn, maybe I should take a real test. The test ended up being negative, and I began to think I had dodged a bullet. Now it became clear to me that I hadn't thought this through. This fact came to my attention about a week after I had verbally tweaked Jeff with my HIV story. When my wife took the tests, and they came back negative, and I still thought I was positive, her shame and guilt evaporated almost immediately. One afternoon, Barb burst into my office, spewing curses that would have made a marine blush. She slammed my office door behind her and began to lash out at me. She waved the test results around and yelled, who the hell is she? You make me feel lower than dirt, and all this time, you've been cheating on me behind my back. Who the hell is she, you son of a bitch? When I'm done with you, HIV will be just one of your problems. She continued this for another minute or two until she finally ran out of breath. Then she collapsed into a chair and started sobbing uncontrollably. Well, if I wanted revenge, I guess I got it. It was time to fish or cut bait. I walked around my desk, knelt down, and wrapped my arms around her. She pushed me away violently but kept crying, so I put my arms around her again, and this time she snuggled up to me. Ah, 
What are we going to do, John? We've ruined everything. I took a deep breath and said, well, cry it out, clean ourselves up, and go home. Then we'll get our lives back together. It's going to take a lot of hard work, and it's going to start with the F word. Oh, John, we can't have sex right now. You have HIV. The word I had in mind is forgiveness, and it starts with us forgiving each other. I forgive you, John, but our life together is ruined, she sobbed as she said it. No, it's not ruined, Barb. Look at me. I forgive you for your cheating, and you need to forgive me for lying to you. Now she didn't look so much angry as confused. We both lied to each other, John. That's what betrayal is. No, Barb. I mean that I lied to you about having HIV. No, I came home that day and saw you with Jeff. I was so furious that I ran out of the house and started planning my revenge. I decided to tell Jeff that you had infected me with HIV, knowing that it would scare him to death. Truth be told, my thinking didn't end there. After that, I just reacted to everything that happened. Barb's face slowly reflected a whole range of emotions as she tried to digest the new information. Honestly, I had no idea what was going to happen next, but even so, she surprised me. Her whole tone changed. Instead of anger, there was concern. Her voice became quiet as if the anger and resentment had faded away as she picked up the pieces in her mind. So you're not sick? No. And you're not going to die? No. You scared the hell out of me, John. You hurt me like hell, Barb. She thought about it some more. And you've never cheated with some whore? No, Barb. I would never cheat on you. I guess that makes me the only cheater in the family, she looked mortified as she said this. You and I are a couple, aren't we, John? I suppose we are. Do you think we should try again? For the first time since she'd walked into my office, she smiled. Yes, John. Good. Why don't I pack my briefcase and we'll go home early? Yes, John. Holding hands, we walked down the hallways of my office and out of the building. At that moment, I felt strangely proud of this woman. She had cheated on me with my best friend, but she also felt guilt and shame, and she had paid the price for looking in the mirror and not liking what she saw. I was full of optimism that we could rebuild this marriage and make it stronger. I'm still mad at you, John. I know. The feeling is mutual. We were angry, but there were tears in our eyes. Only time would tell if we had the character and determination to forgive each other. I was sure we would. Epilogue forgiveness cannot be earned, it can only be given. Rebuilding trust is a constant struggle. Nevertheless, we recognized the reality of our actions, accepted our responsibility, and worked to heal each other. Barb was quick to admit that she understood my actions and held no grudges against me. She and I never reached that point, but I recognize that we are all human and make mistakes, for which we are truly sorry. Another act of forgiveness was needed, and it led me to Claire's front door. My actions towards Jeff caused her untold fear, as she suggested that she too might have HIV. I apologize for not telling her earlier so she wouldn't worry. I had to admit that in all my anger and pain, I had never thought about her. In one complicated conversation, she went from anger to forgiveness to outright hilarity, laughing at my personal vendetta against her soon-to-be ex-husband. She and Barb were never able to repair their relationship, which I believe was the cause of a great loss for both of them. I saw no reason to forgive Jeff, he was a predator we let into our lives, and we were better off without him. I never told him I was clean or that Barb didn't have HIV, and I never saw any reason to do so. Ralph did a better job than I expected, much to my embarrassment. Barb had to explain over and over again that the rumors of her illness were greatly exaggerated, that she did not have HIV, and that she and I were still together. Apparently, no one who had been told by Ralph had bothered to tell Jeff either.